When I had my first vet sim flight, it was a mess. Since I did a lot of things wrong then, in this video I will give you 10 advices for a pleasant vet sim experience. So you won't do my mistakes, do you? Welcome to the Flight and Find and let's learn how to fly better on vet sim. When I was flying for the first time, I would continue on my duties even though hearing that I was being called. Don't do that. Okay. You can start, I'm behind, right behind you. The first and the most important move to remember when flying under an ATC coverage on BATSIM is to stop doing whatever you are doing when you misunderstood or misheard the instructions. And remember, usually you won't get the ATC irritated just by asking to repeat the instructions one more time. Just repeat your call saying they should address you. Uh, Tomjet 296. Follow this advice and you won't ever get in any trouble with the air traffic control on BATSIM. Earlier, when it was coming to flight planning, I did it manually in the little nav map. This application is kind of old school nowadays, but that's what I was used to. But now with my first flight on VATSIM, I met the superior software, which almost every virtual pilot is using nowadays. SimBrief can not only calculate the route for you, but also it can manage your fuel reserves, cargo and passenger amount, and you can pre-file the flight plan from there directly to the network, so that the ATC knows what you are up to. Since it's sometimes hard to remember where and for what you've been just cleared by the controller, it is important to write down all your active clearances and some other basic info. When I was flying with Paprik, he told me about CRAFT, which is an acronym standing for Clearance, Route, Altitude, Frequency and Transponder Code. Fill this little form every time you are having an ATC conversation and you'll be absolutely fine with keeping in mind all the necessary information. And yes, this could be hard sometimes, but this is absolutely useful and convenient when used correctly. Speaking of clearance information, it's very important to look at the charts whenever you are giving, for example, the taxi clearance. The controller sends you a bunch of letters and numbers, which will make no sense until you look at the airport ground chart. Only then you'll be able to know how to get to the gate or to the runway. So keep the charts ready. As well as the charts, you want to set the upcoming frequencies earlier than they would be needed. Because the last thing that you want to do is messing with the radius while on the short final. I've experienced this by myself. As I said, it's better to have everything you'll need ready before it will be needed. At first, when I needed charts, I just went to Google and searched for them there. It's not very convenient because every time you need to transition to the new paper, for example from the taxiway chart to the seat chart, you need to get to the search again, but this time while taking off and monitoring the radio at the same time. Well, thanks to Vapric, I discovered ChartFox. It basically collects every open source chart that other virtual pilots could find on the internet and then places them in order. There you can pin desired charts to later find them in no time. It is hard to control the plane without pilot monitoring, so everything that can reduce your workload is very, very helpful. Speaking of workload, imagine that you are very, very busy preparing your aircraft for takeoff and you are so focused that you don't hear the ATC calling you. This happens a lot to me and it could cause some irritation towards you. For that not to be happening, it's very important to monitor the frequency all the time that you are not on the Unicom. And the best way not to miss your instructions as well as to prepare the aircraft is to monitor the call signs. If it's not yours, then you may stop caring about the instructions. At least, that's how I do it. And for better and faster call sign identification, you want to use the one that can cause any confusion or pronunciation troubles. For example, don't go with Delta 1819, because it can be pronounced by two digit numbers, something like Delta 1819. This call sign will probably create confusion at some point, and everyone will be just guessing the numbers here. Is it 1819 or 8090? To solve this problem every time I fly, I just try to come up with numbers that are easy to remember and easy to pronounce, such as United 401 or KLM 8912. 
Another important thing when in contact with the air traffic controllers is to know both what you need to say and what they are going to say in response. The hardest stage of communication in terms of reading back the instructions is the deliverance controller. He will give you a bunch of information about your flight that you'll need to read him back. My trick here is to listen what he'll say to other departing aircrafts and write those instructions down. Yeah, then, when my turn comes, I just complete my readback with some specific to me information and just repeat what I already possess. This advice is especially actual when you are waiting for the controller to show up during an event. So here you are, program the FMC to the hold mode, by the way, it's also good to know how to do it. Anyway, here you are waiting and waiting, it seems like the ATC is not in a hurry to appear. In this case, it is important to know when to proceed to the airport due to the fuel. You can see the fuel info in the FMC. In some cases, you would need to divert, in some declare fuel starvation, but not let your aircraft plunge down. It is your responsibility to keep the plane flying, so check on fuel regularly. In any case, remember that your first flight will be way harder than subsequent ones. Later you will be able to do things much faster and safer. With practice, you won't forget to turn on packs after the startup. Or leave the landing lights on, like I did. So do your first flight. Without it, you won't start your vet sim experience. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Well, that concludes the video, write in the comments what you would have added. Now you can watch how I struggled on my first flight and go have your good flight on VETSIM.